When we talked about the way that EBV infection works, we actually simplified things a little. So let's go back and be a little more precise now. Anytime EBV infects a new cell, whether it's epithelial cells, B cells, or T cells, it can go one of two ways, lytic or latent. Now with B cells, it's almost always latent, but either way, when the infection is latent, the viral genome sits in the nucleus and a small subset of viral genes are transcribed. And remember that, the fact that it's latent doesn't mean no viral genes are transcribed, it just means no full viral particles are produced. So these genes that are transcribed, what do they do? Well, it turns out they tell the cell to stay alive and proliferate, instead of dying after normal lifespan, which is usual. So, and the way they do this is to downregulate apoptosis and upregulate various proliferative pathways. Why would the virus do that? Because if the B cell survives, then the virus inside it survives. And if the B cell replicates, then it replicates the viral DNA in its nucleus too. So this is actually quite smart of the virus. Now there is a downside to producing these viral proteins during latency, which is that cytotoxic T cells can still recognize and kill latently infected B cells. But nevertheless, by the end of an acute infection with EBV, there will be a small population of latently infected B cells that escapes the immune system and survives long term as the immune response dials down. Okay, so increased survival and increased proliferation. Now what does that make you think of? Hopefully cancer. And indeed, because of these viral proteins, EBV infection predisposes to cancer. And you might already have known that because it's a gamma herpes virus and these can induce cancer. Now what kinds of cancer does EBV cause? Well just remember the cells that EBV infects. Epithelial cells, so that can lead to nasopharyngeal carcinoma. B cells, which can lead to Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin B cell lymphomas, especially Burkitt's lymphoma. And T cells, which can lead to T cell lymphomas. Now you might not know what all these different cancers are exactly, and that's fine, but at least understand the underlying mechanism. Now something that's interesting is that people who are immunosuppressed, especially people with HIV, get a lot more of these cancers, especially the lymphomas. And now that we've talked about all the mechanisms, the reason should be clear. The more immunosuppressed you are, the more EBV can disseminate, the more it'll produce its genes that contribute to the formation of cancers.